Lights, camera, action. When a script is written that is so bad, no one will film it. These brave podcasters will bring it to life just so they can mock it. This is Table Reads. So the movie's kaput, which means your script ain't worth the buffalo shit on a nickel. Table Reads with Sean McBee, Jeff Lewis, and Joshua Baker. Hey everybody, welcome to Table Reads number 120, still in quarantine. (laughs) Quarantizzle for Rizzle. Quarantine episode two. Three? Three, that's what I said. Yeah, uh, so we are coming to you from various undisclosed locations across the country, which is to say the county-ish. Um, the country of Atlanta. <laughs> yes, it, it is a country unto itself. Uh, we are all maintaining safe uh, social distancing. Unfortunately. Uh, which means I am not wearing pants. I miss touching everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Just breathing on them. That was I Jeff's miss- favorite thing. He'd always come in first thing, just like face waterfall. I would. Uh, my favorite thing was to shake Sean's hand and immediately rub my eyes. And now the government's telling me I can't do that. <laughs> this At is least where I we can are. Wear lingerie. Oh. So if we sound and or look terrible, um, the sound is because we're doing this remotely. The look is because you should be used to that by now. Speak for yourself, Sean. I am. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's see what the fuck's been going on. Previously on Table Reads. So last time we were given Dr. Manhattan's entire backstory. From his humble roots as a smitten scientist to his total disincorporation in a lab slash watch fixing accident. His last, his lost love and all the way up to leaving the earth. Uh, With Dr. Manhattan gone, however, the earth is on the brink of nuclear annihilation, pushing the president who sounds exactly like Richard Nixon to contemplate some horrific scenarios before being revealed to be (gasps) Richard Nixon in the least startling reveal in cinema history. Meanwhile, Lori is going to stay over at Dan's place now that her job as Manhattan milker has ended. But first, dinner. (laughs) When we left off, a mysterious figure was watching Lori and Dan in the diner while making Rorschach patterns from ketchup. Will we be treated to another shocking reveal? Fade in. So since I'm not on my phone, it doesn't kick me back to where we last left off. Uh... Can I get a page number? Oh, yeah. We are on uh, scene 107, which is on page 53. Ah, there's our music. Found it. Lost it. Found it. I'm going to blame all tech issues on the coronavirus. That's solid. That's what all of our leaders are doing. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, I can't actually deliver this podcast to our listeners uh, until I've had the chance to sign it. It's got to have my name on it. That joke's way more timely than my stimulated bank account. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, your bank account got stimulated already? Not yet. Carson's did. Oh, oh, a bitch, man. This is a little time capsule right now. Yeah, yeah, this is just for us. This is timely for us. By the time it posts, people are going to be like, well, what are these guys talking about? I'm (laughs) listening to this while walking through a crowded mall. I'm listening to this while at the quarantine, like, uh, DMZ. They're still waiting for their stimulus checks. (laughs) They're like, what the fuck? They're like, wow, (laughs) this is is relevant. They're either going to be listening to this, like, once it's all over, and they're like mall walking in a crowded area or they're going to be listening to it while throwing the bodies of all their loved ones into a mass grave it could go either way 
Oh fuck. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm Age like the, milk, bro. I'm oh no. Thinking that uh, that after the apocalypse they'll be like, oh, finally I can go out with my friends, and then they put our podcast in their ears. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this this podcast is the only thing getting people through this. I'm sure, right? And I'm no, uh, it's, me, it's, me it's alcohol and weed. <laughs> oh, and table reads. You know, we can all hope. A little um, bit of blue dick goes a long way. Speaking of which, let's find out where the blue dick is. <laughs> Mars. Interior. <laughs> Dreberg's apartment, night. The guest bedroom is furnished in a somewhat grandmotherly style. Flowered wallpaper, an old brass bed with a frilly comforter, etc. It's small but cozy, and Lori lets out an appreciative, ah as Dreberg ushers her in. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm still trying to find I'm the page. I'm still lost to, like, my, my computer's being... My special. number's not away. That's yeah. okay, because I skipped an entire scene. 50, oh, good. 50, page 50 what again? I, I, my numbers 53, are back. 53, 54. 53 of 113. Uh, I'm there. All right, we're on scene 107. Yes, yes. It's all coming together Which I now. previously skipped. Exterior. And I'm <clears throat> Lori. Okay. Yes, exterior. Alley behind Gunga Diner. Sunset. A short order cook. All right, here we go. Sorry. <laughs> you got it? <laughs> Everything happening up. right now is due to the coronavirus. God Fucking damn coronavirus. Damn, Rona. Get the fucking Rona. The coronavirus ate scene 107, but it's back now, so <laughs> yeah. we're going to go through it. A short order cook empties garbage into a can outside the restaurant, then disappears inside. Two beats later, a dark silhouette strolls casually down the alleyway. He moves a garbage can, finds a sheet of plywood tacked to the crumbled brick wall behind it. He pries the plywood loose finds a small recess in the wall, then extracts a slouch hat and a shifting ink blot mask. Oh no. My sound effects didn't work. Can't see your board. Dun, dun, dun. That's what I was trying to play. Why isn't it working? We, we did it. Reboot it. Reboot it again. It's, it's Richard Nixon. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I already read this next chunk, so why don't you guys reread it for me while I fix my soundboard? Page. Go, Jeff. Wait, I'm Laura. You read me in. Uh. Okay. Interior, Dryberg's apartment, night. The guest bedroom is furnished in a somewhat grandmotherly style. Flowered wallpaper, an old brass bed with a frilly comforter, etc. It's small but cozy, and Lori lets out an appreciative, ah... As Dryberg ushers her in. This is so nice of you, Daniel. I, I really do appreciate it. Dreberg's right, lugging her suitcase. Right. He sets them on the bed and stands there a moment, looking vaguely expectant. Are you waiting for a trip? Tip. Uh, oh, oh, Wait, no. Tip. Oh, shit, tip. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you a tip. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, no, Sorry. I'll be right down the hall if you want me. I I mean, if you need some aspirin or... I'm going to take a warm bath and sack out. You've been really sweet. Sleep tight, okay? This dude is so thinking he's going to get laid. But <laughs> he's just standing there. She just said sack out, bro. Like he's Yeah, but he's standing there like a Rob Schneider in Home Alone 2, like just waiting for pussy. He's just like, come on, but like rubbing his fucking gloves hands together. <laughs> he's got a Dick, Leonard Cohen want, CD in Dick? his hand. <laughs> <laughs> she gives him a sisterly peck on the cheek, then returns to her unpacking. Dreberg watches her for a second, then turns to go. Interior hallway on Dreberg. As he closes the door, he gets a quick glimpse from behind of Lori unbuttoning her shirt. He quickly averts his gaze and pulls the door shut. Uh, interior, Dreberg's bedroom, night. Dreberg, in pajamas, oh, wax it. Climbs into bed and kills the light. 
He folds his hands behind his back and stares up at the ceiling. Behind his head and stares up at the ceiling. How do they get back? <laughs> Lays on his back. Just I was I was picturing him putting <laughs> them behind his, his head, but I read it cock. as behind his back. He, God he damn only, coronavirus! He, he can only sleep if he dreams like he's being arrested. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, green light. <laughs> Flashback. Processed footage. Another quick glimpse of daring do. This time it's Silk Spectre, Lori. In the midst of a gang of thugs, she fights them off valiantly, but she's heavily outnumbered. She turns and runs. An oblong f shadow falls across the ground, and Night Owl swings into frame. He's clinging to a rope ladder which hangs from his airship overhead. In one smooth motion, he swoops into Lori's path and snatches her into the air, safe from the clutches of her pursuers. Interior, bedroom, Andreeberg. His head turns at the sound of water running in the bathroom adjacent. He's going to be awake half the night thinking of Lori. Gross. Cut to exterior street day early morning. Across the street from us is a bubble car parked in an alley. Its occupants, Moloch, and a straight-laced guy in a suit and crew cut. He's got a definite CTU look about him. Moloch gets out, scans the street and crosses toward the Gunga Diner. Interior, Gunga Diner, restroom, a moment later. A twitchy Moloch locks himself in a stall, sits on the throne, and pulls out a bundle of white powder. He takes a couple of hits up the nose, then dips his finger in the stuff and rubs it around the edges of his eyelids. Yeah. He's <laughs> the best magician in the world. <laughs> his eyes water. He sniffles. He reaches... The eyelids? Like, I see people in movies do it on their gums. What the, the... Listen, this is a classic supervillain move. We're seeing behind the curtain. You know when they just get so fucked up, they just rub coke in their eyes? God damn. That's how you get coronavirus from cocaine. <laughs> just gonna beat that horse to death. It's gonna date this so poorly. Like it has the coronavirus. This reminds me of that time we were podcasting during that Spanish influenza. <laughs> back in 1918, when everybody talked like this. That's why people didn't podcast back then. It's the only reason. Uh, edges of his eyelids. His eyes water. He sniffles. He reaches for some toilet paper. Bizarrely, a small business card falls out of the roll. He picks it up. There's a hand-scrawled Rorschach blot on its face. A low, hissing growl from overhead. Moloch looks up suddenly and, see <laughs> and sees Rorschach peering at him over the stall partition. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing in there? Did you get my card? My poops are symmetrical. <laughs> I'm a good drawer. <laughs> he gasps and lunges for the door. Rorschach's arm snakes out and holds the stall door shut. What? How? Snakes out from his butt? I don't where is it? So he's looking over one of the sides, and then Moloch's like, oh, I gotta get out of here. So somehow Rorschach like, reaches down and around while still making <laughs> eye contact and he's, has enough he's, strength to hold Maybe he's, he's grabbing Inspector the top Gadget. edge of the door. He's Inspector Gadget, dude. Oh, that's do, right. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Uh, Jeff, you were, uh, oh, me. you were Rorschach, right? Yeah, once yeah. again, it does not look like fucking dialogue. <clears throat> Two things I hate. Street mimes. Users of recreational drugs. No, no. You've got it all wrong. I've been on the case, Rorschach. I got something for you. A long pause. Rorschach growls again. Let's have Let's it. Let's have it. Oh, it's not sorry. dialogue. It's like it's weird. It I know it's weird. It should be dialogue. <laughs> I'll let you read it because it makes more sense that way. Rorschach <laughs> growls again. Let's have it. Though I really think bunch of I think what it's supposed to be is uh, he's growling, and the growl is supposed to convey "Let's have it." He's okay. like, "Let's have it." It's it's like right. it's like the script that Vin Diesel got for Groot. 
Ah. All the lines are I am Groot, but what they're really saying is this. Yeah. Nuance. <laughs> There's a big bunch of research scientists missing. Blake was on the case, trying to track them down. It's big, Rorschach. Something to do with Doc Manhattan. That's all I've been able to find out. Drug habit. Highly illegal. Mm. Let it go. Let it go time. In future, just say no. With that, he disappears over the edge of the stall. Moloch sits there a moment. He reaches for the stall door, rattles it. It won't open. Hey! Rorschach stuck a broomstick through the door handles on the adjacent stalls. As Moloch pounds on the door in frustration, we cut to... Interior, Veet's penthouse suite. Day. A plush reception room in his Veet Industries pyramid. It's decorated in the same Egyptian motifs as his office. Veet sits in an overstuffed chair surrounded by video cameras. He's in the process of charming Justine James, a fawning Barbara Walters figure who's prepping a segment for her next celebrity chat special. Now, Adrian, I guess there's one <laughs> thing everyone wants to know. Are you the world's smartest man? Oh my, yes. And the best dressed. A round of chuckles from the video crew. What a smoothie. You're certainly one of the witchest. Holder of over 40 basic patents, including products that have changed our everyday wives. If you had <laughs> one achievement you were proudest of, what would it be? Veet ponders for a second, then reaches into his jacket and pulls out his gold cigarette case. Sphinx brand. When I got out of weapons design, I wanted to move into a more humanitarian area. I was thinking, what would do good in the world? And I thought, why not a genetically altered tobacco that not only doesn't cause cancer, but cleans out your lungs as you smoke it? Lighting up. In fact, I think I'll have one now. Care to join me? Thanks, no. But it's a wonderful product. Now, Adrian... Your old colleague, Dr. Manhattan, has just left the planet amid woomas. No, no, cut. Justine, we agreed. No questions about the Watchman. Oh, sweetheart, just a quick one. No, we laid out very careful ground rules. Veet is interrupted by a growling noise from his office adjacent. He glances quickly over his shoulder, then gets back to business. We agreed specifically. More growling from the next room over. The camera crew's getting curious. Veet gets up from his chair. Excuse me a second. He goes to the office door and slips inside. The usually smiley Justine shoots a look of disgust at her crew. What a prick. What a prick. Interior, Veet's office. Day. Veet is shocked to find Rorschach down on the carpet, wrestling with his mutant links. He claps his hands twice. Kitty! One last nip and the cat backs off. Rorschach gets to his feet. <clears throat> no visible signs of damage, except for a severe bruise to his dignity. How the hell did you get in here? The curtains are flapping. A br so much for being the smartest man in the world. The curtains are <laughs> flapping. A breeze hits Vita across the face. He looks up, sees a neat round hole cut out of his plate glass window. New information. Pointing to the telephone. Ever see one of these before? Too important for telephone. Comedian, Dr. Manhattan, all linked up. What is that ungodly smell? Rorschach, abashed, lets out a timid version of his trademark hiss. Bigger than I thought. CTU involved. Yeah, I've heard all about your conspiracy theories. Now, I've got a room full of cameras in there. I want you out. Now. Whatever you're doing, knock it off. You're making all of us look bad. Fate of the world at stake, Adrian. Can't get too worked up over bad press. He makes for the window. Veet frowns, adjusts his tie, and exits. Cut to 117. Oh, I don't need to read the scene number. Idiot. Interior, Dreeberg's kitchen. Night. 
Dreberg and Lori are cooking dinner. Dreberg burns his fingers on a broiling pan, which prompts a sudden round of stamping and cursing. Lori watches for a minute, then shakes her head. She pours a full glass of wine and thrusts it at him. Lori. Oh, sorry. Daniel, drink this immediately. I swear, you're acting like a kid on a date. Sucking on his burnt fingers, he reluctantly takes the wine glass. Okay, I'm, I'm nervous. It's an odd sensation. I've always had to think of you as Dr. Manhattan's... He catches himself too late. Lori glowers at him. His what? His milker. <laughs> the, the blue, the big blue penis milker. Blue milk. <laughs> his, uh, whatever. I'm not his whatever, okay? She spears a couple of steaks, drops them on plates, and heads toward the dining room. Look, I just want to eat dinner and get drunk. Let's not make it any more difficult than we have to, huh? It sounds like she's talking about fucking him. Like, yeah. I just want to eat dinner and get drunk. Let's not make this any more difficult than it has to. I right. don't want to do this sober. I already have to fuck you. <laughs> Let's not, like, make it a chore. Uh, insert television screen. The latest bad news from half a world away. Meanwhile, in Afghanistan, the fighting continues to escalate. On a televised map of Afghanistan, red Russian arrows are working their way slowly but inexorably toward Pakistani territory. With Russian forces approaching the border, Pakistan today called on the U.S. to intervene. President Nixon has placed America's European military installations on full alert. Camera pulls back, placing us in... Interior, Treberg's apartment, night. A dining room table littered with crumpled napkins and dirty dishes. Treberg and Lori have just finished dinner. He stares in dismay at the TV screen as he opens a fresh bottle of wine. Good lord. With John out of the picture, it's a whole new ball game. Lori's already a little tipsy, and the broadcast doesn't much interest her. Wine glass in hand, she's wandered over to the stereo cabinet. That's right, Daniel. A whole new ball game. God, I haven't seen one of these in 15 years. I heard there was a secret court. <laughs> <laughs> She's referring to Dreberg's ancient turntable. Shelved beneath it are row upon row of LPs. These days, they're obsolete collector's items. I told you I was a little bit out of step. A lot of the old stuff I listened to... Never came out on Crystal. I'd say you stalled out about 40 years ago. Nellie Lutcher, Louis Jordan. I've never even heard of these people. Play one. Educate yourself. It's going to be 99 Red Balloons, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Lori chuckles. Her head turns at the sound of a familiar commercial theme. On the TV, a young woman sits at her vanity and gazes lovingly at a wedding picture framed in silver. Oh, look. It's Adrian's ad. Oh my, my darling, darling, it's, it's incredible, incredible that, that, that someone, someone so, so unforgettable. It said chorus, so I figured it was meant to be multiple people. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> Interior, tenement flat, night. Moloch's apartment. The same commercial is blaring from the TV as Rorschach lets himself in. Should think I am unforgettable, unforgettable too. We are so perfect. <laughs> There's oh a little my. bit of lag, so like I didn't even try. No, That's a good if you point. Try. It's better if you try. It's funnier. <laughs> oh, I can't oh, wait. I can't wait to hear how it actually like lines up on the recording. It does not. <laughs> Sean can actually fix that, so it does sound. I no, I can won't. cheat it. it no won't. one will know. Except yeah. the people who watch it on YouTube, where I don't do editing. Hi, YouTube people. No reply so from... Sorry? Moloch. Oh, thanks. I forgot that. No reply from <laughs> Moloch, who sits in an easy chair, his back to camera, seemingly glued to the tube. Rorschach casts a cautious glance around the room and advances stealthily toward the chair. On screen... 
Why are you being stealthy when you've just announced yourself? I'm here! Ooh, tiptoe, tiptoe, tiptoe. Moloch! Maybe you didn't hear me. <laughs> Perfect opportunity. <laughs> On screen, the woman at the vanity opens a jar and smears lime green goo on her face tell me on it josh the years melt away with nostalgia use it once a week and wrinkles vanish overnight medically tested non-habit forming nostalgia is the patented beauty cream that actually reverses the aging process moloch he creeps up behind moloch lays a hand on his shoulder reverse angle on moloch Staring at the TV screen with sightless eyes, there's a neat round bullet hole in the center of his forehead. Rorschach sees it and spins on his heels, anticipating an ambush. For the smooth young face he'll never forget. Interior, Dreberg's apartment. That moment, night. Lori is still flipping through records. Dreberg chuckles at the TV ad. Turn back the clock with nostalgia from Veed Industries. No wonder Adrian's rich. You use that stuff? Sure. It works. I mean, look at this face, Daniel. I'm 38 years old. I don't mind getting older. I'm obsolete anyway. Why try to hide it? I like the way you look. It's strange with John. He doesn't age. His face doesn't change. But you, Daniel, you look... Old? Not at all. You, you look very dashing. Here, you pick one. What? Pick a record. I feel like dancing. Her tone is unmistakably, unmistakably flirtatious. Dreberg hesitates. Then, with a non-committal smile, he moves to the record cabinet. Barry White. I wish, I wish he, they would have gave me that direction before I read it, not after. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rorschach making, uh, interior, tenement flat, night. Rorschach making a hasty exit. An amplified voice booms out. Rorschach, this is the Civil Terrorism Unit. You have one minute to come out. He goes to the window and peeks through the blinds. On the street outside, bubble cars are massing, blocking off the intersection. A CTU SWAT team prepares to raid the building. You won't be harmed. Come out. It's all over. He's walked into a trap. The police are like, okay, he's going to meet this guy. So what we're going to do, we're going to shoot this guy in the head so we can catch the bad guy. <laughs> and we're going to let him know we won't hurt him. Yeah. We won't hurt you. Not like that guy we just shot in the head. I mean, we're out of bullets now. <laughs> we just brought the one. <laughs> he walked into a trap. As he lets the blinds fall, all sound dies, and a bouncy, tinkling piano theme comes up underneath. Interior, Dreebig's apartment, night. Wait. There we go. Interior, Dreebig's apartment, night. The piano music emanates from Dreebig's stereo, an old Fats Waller tune, Sposen. He's slow dancing with Lori, their faces illuminated by the cold blue flicker of the television. With a smile, she reaches up to remove his glasses, then deposits them in his shirt pocket. Dreamily, she rests her hand on his shoulder. Her nearness is making him nervous. She pauses in mid-step and takes his face in her hands. She tries to, he tries to look away, but she pulls his face around so that he can't avoid her gaze any longer and plants a soft kiss on his mouth. The piano intro ends, and Fats' teasing vocal begins. One of you guys, I'm not singing. Sposin, I should fall in love with you. Do you think that you could fall in love with me too? I have no idea how that song goes. <laughs> Those also aren't the words that were written, Those but that's okay. Those also aren't the words. <laughs> I made it up. It's my song now. <laughs> Spoke like, that I just write my own goddamn song. <laughs> because we're but not you... getting sued by Fats Waller. That's why. <laughs> Fats Waller Camp won't sue me again, goddammit. 
<laughs> going to jail for fat swallow again. I'm trying to th I'm trying to think what parts I made up. I was just I just kind of closed my eyes and went with it. It's just that you could love me too, not that you could fall in love with me too. Yeah, no, I fixed it. Interior tenement, that moment, night. Song continues underneath. Cheerful soundtrack accompaniment to a horrific silent movie. Rorschach races out of the bathroom carrying a plastic mop bucket. Puts an armload of bottles and aerosol cans, ordinary household supplies... He enters the kitchen, rummages around under the sink, finds another handful of bottles, cleaning fluid, rubbing alcohol, Drano. Guys, does this seem familiar to you? Seems pretty familiar to me. We just had this in Batman Year One. Yeah, we did. This is exactly how he got out of the bar. Yeah. I like <clears throat> I like to think that they both had the same scene like they did in the movie where it's just him running around the bathroom going, no, 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 no. <laughs> 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 uh Jeff, go ahead and put uh kitchen chemical bomb in your lore book. Oh yeah, no, the, the table reads is famous for its kitchen chemical bomb. <laughs> uh writing that down. <laughs> almost as an afterthought, he moves to the gas stove, turns on all the burners, and blows out the flames. Jeff, keep singing. Oh, Sposen, I should fall in love with you too. Do you think you could love me too? <laughs> Not Dude. in all the words. Dude, what the fuck are you reading? <laughs> <laughs> what I'm doing is is combining them. <laughs> Stop it! Read the goddamn <laughs> script, motherfucker. No, fuck you! It's this so... is the one that's not produced. You're not giving them an accurate representation of this shit. Oh yeah, no, I've mixed two words up in a fucking throwaway. Two words. Two this words. one was completely just... different. But yeah, this is a different I stanza, motherfucker. From... Like, did I read the wrong one? You yeah. Did. Lower. Yeah, one of them was... Lower after doorway in flame. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, supposing I should hug you and caress you, would it impress you? Interior, tenement, front stairwell, that moment. A contingent of armed CTU men rushing silently up the stairs. Would it distress you? Mm. <laughs> Interior, tenement, that moment. <laughs> Rorschach, dousing the living room carpet with charcoal lighter and rubbing alcohol. There's a pile of bottles, only half emptied. Resting next to the front door. This music's perfect. Dun, 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 dun. The CTU cops are pounding on the front door, trying to break it down. Rorschach crouches in the hallway just outside the living room. The door finally gives way, and the cops tumble in. Rorschach strikes a match and holds it to the nozzle of the aerosol can, creating a miniature flamethrower. The cops' heads swivel just as the puddle on the carpet catches, and a moment later, the pile of bottles explodes, engulfing the doorway in flame. Suppose then I should say for you I yearn. Yeah, I yearn, sure I do. Would you think I'm speaking out of turn? Interior, Dreberg's apartment, night. Dreberg and Lori, horizontal on the sofa. Whoa, they fucking burn, burn, burn. Their clothes in disarray. Lori kisses him hungrily. But he's distant, panicky, unable to respond. It's been a long time for him. It's not going well. Supposing I declare it, would you take my love and share it? I'm not supposing I'm in love with you. He wriggles beneath her. She takes his hands. He <laughs> takes his hand, presses it to her breast. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> Interior tenement, that moment, night. Instrumental bridge continues underneath as Rorschach backs through the kitchen with his bucket. Smoke billows in from the living room. He empties two bottles of cooking oil on the linoleum floor. Then he ducks through a door into the back stairwell. Interior, stairwell landing, a moment later. Rorschach opens a bottle of cleaning fluid, stuffs a wad of newspaper into its neck, the first wave of cops, coughing and hacking from the smoke, makes it into the kitchen just as he ignites his Molotov cocktail and tosses it inside. The cops pitch backward as the bottles 
As the bottle blows up, by the time they hit the floor, the cooking oil has burst into flame. Rorschach bolts up the stairs. By now, another squad of CTU men is coming up with, uh, coming up with back way behind him. That's really <laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah, I I thought that I was having a stroke, nope. but it was the script. Yep. Interior. He's just saying it. Interior kitchen. A moment later. Charred cops, leaping flames. Camera zeroes in on the gas stove. Exterior tenement. That moment, night. A gaping hole blows open in the front of the building. Fiery rubble hails down on the CTU units outside. Re-enter fats on vocals. Supposing I should hug you and caress you, would it impress you? Interior, Dreberg's apartment, night. Lori is fumbling with Dreberg's pants. Finally, he can't stand it anymore. And with a pain-stricken look, he pushes her away and sits up on the sofa. His head sinks into his hands. At first, she doesn't understand. Then her face softens. She moves to his side, embracing his shoulders, gently stroking his hair. Or oh, would it distress you? Interior tenement, back stairwell, that moment. Rorschach huddled on the uppermost landing, just below roof level. By now, the whole building is ablaze. Two flights down, a pair of CTU cops are fighting their way through the inferno, still on his tail. This is a different scene from Batman Year One. Right, this is, this is the end with the homeless people. Yep. And the sweet bomb on a string from a helicopter. <laughs> it's, it's even a tenement. What's happening? <laughs> he still has his mop bucket. It's half full of water. He reaches for his last can, a can of Drano, and empties it into the bucket, where it begins to hiss and sizzle. Supposing I should say for you I yearn, would you think I'm speaking out of turn? The cops are almost on him, racing upward two steps at a time. He steps out in front of them and, before they can hoist their weapons, heaves the bucket full of boiling Drano into their faces. The cops shriek soundlessly and topple backwards into the flames as Rorschach turns tail and burns through the door to the roof. Exterior tenement roof, a moment later, night. Rorschach emerges, and a blinding light catches him full in the face. Hovering not 20 feet overhead is a police airship, a blimp-like craft of the sort we saw earlier. A spray of machine gun fire peppers the roof. Supposing I declare it, would you take my love and share it? Rorschach scuttles along the edge of the roof, finds a rickety fire escape, and dives over. Unfortunately, he's now exposed on the front of the building, pinned to the wall by gunfire from the SWAT team on the street. Tongues of flame dart from nearby windows. He turns and tries to climb back up upward, but more cops from the just-landed airship are already spilling over the edge of the roof. I ain't supposing I'm in love with you. The song ends. And on the last note, Rorschach emits an ungodly howl of fury, diving over the metal railing, plunging into the street below. Exterior street, that moment. Three stories down, he crashes into a cluster of garbage cans and lies there, spent, twisted, racked with pain. The CTU cops are on him instantly, kicking him, pummeling him with billy cub clubs and rifle butts. Get him! Get, Get his, his mask. mask! Let's see the little fucker's face! Yeah! yeah. No! No! In seconds, the inkblot mask is off, revealing a pocked, doughy face topped off with a shock of matted red hair. It's a familiar face. The face of the street crazy who haunts the newsstand with his placards announcing the end of the world. Christ. He's got five inch heels. The fucking runt wears elevator shoes. No, no, give it back. He kicks and claws at the cops as they drag him unceremoniously off to a nearby van. So that's the terror of the underworld. That ugly little zero. Give me back my face. The van door slams shut on Rorschach, just as the first fire trucks arrive to turn their hoses on the flaming skeleton of the tenement. Table Reads will return after this brief word from our sponsors. 
What's up, docs and docettes? Trevor Thompson, the self-appointed Looney Tunes critic here, and if you like old cartoons and watching online reviewers dissect them, then you probably said the same thing I did about two years ago. Hey, what the fuck? Bear, watch your language, you bud. Every Saturday morning, I do a brand new commentary of a Warner Brothers short. All throughout the month, I do video essays examining the history of these cartoons. Catch my videos on youtube.com slash Ferris Wheelhouse 2, or just use the hashtag Looney Tunes Critic. And now, here's Eric Bowser, the new voice of Bugs Bunny. You've been listening to the Looney Tunes Critic. Ain't he a stinker? Lights, camera, action. So the movie's kaput, which means your script ain't worth the buffalo shit on a nickel. Now, back to Table Reads. Hey, we're back. We did it. We did it. So now we're, we're getting into, like, the real fun stuff, where Rorschach's going to be, like, in prison, like, you're all trapped in here with me. That's right. It's me. The story's about me. So that's exciting. <laughs> Uh, let's just jump back in. What do you think? Sure, let's let it. Hopping on in. Fade in. Uh, where the fuck are we, though? Uh, 137. There it is. Interior, Dreberg's apartment, night. Dreberg and Lori stretched out on the sofa, under a blanket. He stares up at the ceiling, still troubled. I'm sorry, Lori, I... It's all right, Dan. I just want you to hold me, okay? Just hold me. For a few moments, she lies nestled peacefully against his chest. His gaze drifts over to the TV. Suddenly, he blanches. Daniel, what? On the TV screen is a huge blue screen close-up of Rorschach. Daniel reaches for the remote control to turn up the volume. A 10-year manhunt ended tonight with the capture of the max vigilante known as Rorschach. ACTU men died in the violent confrontation in the downtown tenement. The news report cuts live to the smoking wreckage of the tenement. Eight tops? No, oh, great. Jury's gonna love that. Are you kidding? They put him in jail, he's dead. He'll never get to trial. Now the screen shows side-by-side -side close-ups of the inkblot mask and the acne-scarred face beneath it. Lori looks on, transfixed. Identified as Walter Joseph Kovacs, 44, a transient with a history of psychological disorders. A formal landlord described Kovacs as a self-confessed loner and political extremist. All kinds of weird, lit weird old literature, paraphernalia. You should have seen that place when I threw him out. Talk about pig pens. That was the landlord on TV. Lori hits the mute button. Settles back and lets out a low whistle. Dreberg, distracted, pours a glass of wine and gets up to pace the room. I just realized I'd never seen his face. I guess it was just a matter of time. He's totally... Daniel? What's wrong? The comedian, John. Now Rorschach. He stares at her, obviously wondering, who's next? Exterior, news kiosk, evening. The familiar news vendor peddling papers. A feisty little black kid, the same one who made a face at Rorschach, sits on the pavement nearby, reading a comic book. The news vendor nudges him, indicates that the comic book, a patriotic little number entitled Colonel North and His Howling Commandos. Hey, this ain't a lending library. I expect you to pay me for that. Hold on. Howling Commandos? Yeah. That's Sergeant Fury and His Howling Commandos. That's Marvel. No, this is obviously Colonel North. No way, this one sucks. <laughs> A customer, 50, black, on the tubby side, stops at the newsstand. His name is Dr. Malcolm Long. Oh, give a good psychiatrist voice. Like patronizing. Is that me? Yeah. Gazette, please. The news vendor hands over a copy of the Gazette. The cover bears a side-by-side -side photos of Rorschach and his alter ego, Kovacs, with the banner headline, CTU apprehends masked killer. Do you see this? This guy's a customer of mine. I mean, I always knew he was a little flaky, but wild, huh? You never know. 
Long hands over a quarter, unfolds the paper, and begins to read as he wanders off down the street. Study, night. Dr. Long, who happens to be a police psychiatrist, sits at a big desk with a sign reading police psychiatrist, apparently. <laughs> with a vast heap of paperwork, which includes a mug sheet of Rorschach, minus the mask, and a neatly typed arrest report from the NYPD. Name, Kovacs, Walter Joseph. Address, Transient. Born, 3-21-43. Mother's name, Kovacs, Sylvia J. Nay Glick. Father's name, Unknown. By now, Long is working on his third pot of coffee. His wife, Sylvia, wanders in behind him, dressed for bed in her robe and slippers. <clears throat> when she rests her heads, hands on his shoulder, he nearly jumps out of his seat. Oh, sorry. I didn't see you here. How much longer? Staring it's that down vigilante. The in, sorry. It's that vigilante, isn't it? That Rorschach. Kovacs. Incredible case. Blinded two children at the age of 10. We pulled his record from the juvenile home. Without looking up, he shoves sheaf's shoves a sheaf of paper in Sylvia's direction. No mother, or no father, mother of prostitute. Some evidence of systemic child abuse. Swiveling to face her. Classic case of misplaced aggression. You know these vigilantes, these watchmen. There's never been a systemic, a systematic study to find out just what makes them do it. Malcolm, don't get too overwhelmed by all this. Sylvia picks up a blurry Xerox of a child's drawing. Two hideous figures, male and female, with wild eyes, fangs, and matted hair. They're conjoined like Siamese twins at the mouth, belly, and crotch. This twisted vision of coitus bears the crayoned title, My <clears throat> Dream, by W.J. Kovacs, age 13. It's too strong to look at for long. He sets it aside... He sets it down with a shiver. Why don't you come to bed? I'd like to get my hands on some of the others. Explosive material. Grabbing a transcript. Mother died when he was 14. When they told him he had one word of comment. Good. 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 <laughs> Sylvia shoots him a hard look, shakes her head almost imperceptibly, and gives up. She turns and pads slightly out of the room. Long goes right on talking, unaware that his audience has left. Still, he's not stupid. In some ways, he's got an extraordinary mind. I think I can reach him. I can reach him. Cut to interior prison interrogation room, day. A bare windowless chamber, 10 feet by 10 feet. Long and Rorschach sit in folding chairs on opposite sides of a square table. The doctor reaches into his briefcase and pulls out a stack of cards. Now, Walter, you obviously know what these are. I want you to look at each card in turn and tell me what it reminds you of, all right? Rorschach's face is bruised, bloodied, and blank. Dr. Long turns up the first card, a symmetrical ink blot, part of a Rorschach test. Butterfly. Long nods, makes a notation on a pad, turns up the next card. Some nice flowers. Long eyes him skeptically. Makes another note. Turns up the third card. Rorschach stares at it for a long moment. A doggy. A big old floppy-eared dog. He shows the hint of a smile. Dr. Long heaves a sigh of frustration. <sighs> Walter. Don't call me that. Walter, you're telling me what you think I want to hear. Wrong answers. There's no right or wrong, but if you don't give me an honest response, I can't help you. I want to help you. I want to know all about you. <sighs> like to masturbate. Shit once a day. Long knows the standard procedure for intransient, intransigent cases like this. He shrugs indifferently, reaches for his briefcase, then gropes under the table and presses a buzzer to summon the guards. Well then, have it your way, Walter. Let me know when you decide to cooperate. 
Two prison guards enter through a steel door. Rorschach gets up to leave. He pauses in the doorway. Doctor, you don't want to help me. You just want to find out what makes me sick. You'll find out. You'll find out. Cut to interior, Veet Industries Pyramid, day. A huge open atrium on the ground floor with marble columns, fountains, eucalyptus <clears throat> trees, an Egyptian pleasure garden. Justine's hanging out with her video crew. They spot Veet on the central escalator and swing into action. Adrian, Adrian, can you give us a comment of Warshak? He's not at all happy to see her. His flunkies, bodyguards and secretaries, form a wedge around him as he tries to push past the cameras. No comment. Did you know he was back on the streets? I did not. Now get out of my way. Isn't it true that you... He just keeps walking, with Justine in, his, in hot pursuit. Then, wide-eyed, he stops in his tracks. An armed gunman has stepped out from behind a pillar, directly into Veet's path. Veet! I, I love that his name is Assassin. I'm Assassin! <laughs> you remember me, Carl Assassin? How did he... Oh, hey, Mr. Assassin. <laughs> Veet dives. The assassin's bullet catches Justine in the gut and comes out the other side in a spray of blood. With a gymnast agility, Veet rolls to the right and comes up with a brass ashtray in his hands. He swings it into the assassin's ribs, knocking him backward into a fountain. The gun skitters off across the marble floor. As the security guard, as the security staff races up, Veet steps into the fountain and slams the dazed assassin's head into a decorative bust of King Tut. Son of a bitch, who sent you? Arms flying, the two men grapple. Feet grabs hold of Assassin's hair and thrusts a hand into his mouth. Stand back, Stand Mr. Veet. We'll handle it. He's got some kind of poison capsule. Don't bite down, you scum. I want to know who sent you. The Assassin gags and goes <clears throat> limp. His lifeless body slumps down into the water. Veet steps out, shaken and breathless. God damn it. Who'd want to kill you, Mr. Veet? I don't know. I don't know. Get an ambulance for Miss James. Cut to interior, Dreberg's bedroom, dusk. Tight on a portable TV turned to the evening news. You're our go-to newscaster, Josh. My bad. Third day of rioting in major European cities amid escalating fears of nuclear war. In London, six people were trampled outside St. Paul's Cathedral when overflow crowds were turned away from morning mass. A phone rings. Dreberg, who's sprawled on his bed watching the TV, reaches for the receiver. Yeah? Adrian, what's up? Intercut, Veet and Dreberg. And have something to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to call before you heard it on the news. Someone tried to kill me today. For a moment, Dreberg says nothing. He's not altogether surprised. Who? I don't know, but in the wake of all that's happened... I'm starting to think Rorschach may have been right. Is Laurie okay? She's with me. Good. Be careful, Daniel. Don't let up your guard. Look, I'm going to head south for a while. Hold up at Karnak until all this blows over. You two would be welcome to join me. Thanks for the offer, Adrian. I'll let you know. He hangs up and weighs his options while he stares at the box. Lori enters from the hallway, dressed in a bathrobe, toweling off her hair. Oh, I could use some dinner. Who was that on the phone? One more down. Someone tried to kill Adrian. First time I've ever heard him scared. He doesn't say any more than that. He doesn't have to. Lori picks up on the implications immediately. She exhales sharply, turns away from him, and steadies herself against the bureau. What is it? 
I know what you're thinking. I read it like that because there's no question mark, by the way. (laughs) What is it? (laughs) What is it? (laughs) What is it? I know what you're thinking. You'd be a lot safer if I weren't around. Lori. I'm an open target, Dan. If you're with me. With any luck, the world will end before we get ours. His sour wisecrack starts her trembling, almost crying. Dreberg, fed up with his own pessimism, climbs out of the bed and walks over behind her. I shouldn't be here anyway, Daniel. It's something I haven't told you. I'm sorry. There's something I haven't told you. But before she does, he shushes her, wraps his arms around her from behind. Lori, I'm not afraid. I want you with me. I want it more than anything else in the world. (laughs) <laughs> what a fucking chump this guy is <laughs> I, I really wanted him to just like be trying to convince himself cause he, he seems pretty innerly focused I love the idea that like he makes that joke and she starts crying and he's just like god I'm a cock <laughs> <laughs> I made her cry holy shit I got a boner <laughs> yeah, I'm finally hard Lori you can't do it unless you cry <laughs> I'm just like John. Uh, cut to interior prison mess hall night. Convicts line up, lined up with metal trays at a long cafeteria-style serving area. Rorschach enters in prison grays. As he makes his way toward the dinner line, we pick up a chorus of comments from the nearby tables. Hey, Rorschach! You dead, man? Just a, just matter, a matter of time, of time now. now. Oh, that's that's not a chorus of voices. That yeah. he actually wrote them all out separately in different lines and called them voices. Okay, Rorschach, better put some meat on that pretty ass of yours. Ooh, L- low threatening chuckles all around <laughs> as an expressionless Rorschach picks up his tray. A trio of goons falls in behind him. The smallest of them outweighs him by a good forty pounds. Didn't know he was such a tiny little thing. Little. Little. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no. go ahead. <laughs> okay. Little. Nah, he's a big man. Big man. Rorschach's face shows no emotion. He moves forward in the line. A server drops a grisly chunk of meat on his tin plate. I'd like to get his autograph. I got my autograph book right here. Goon 3 reaches into his pocket and withdraws an ice pick. Notched up some big names over the years. Suddenly, Rorschach spins, catching Goon's three, Goon 3's head with the edge of his dinner tray. The ice pick clatters to the floor. Goon 3 follows. The others are on him in an instant, pinning him against the serving counter. Instead of resisting, Rorschach vaults backwards. He brings a knee up into Goon 2's chin. Chine, sorry. Into it, Goon 2's chine. Grabs a fistful of Goon 1's hair and tumbles back over the counter, dragging Goon One's head, face down, into a steam tray full of bubbling soup. Landing on his feet, keeping his grip on Goon One's hair, Rorschach uses his free hand to bury a fork in a cafeteria worker's gut. Goon Two lunges at him across the counter. He grabs a vat of, off a nearby burner and, with a single sweep of the arm, douses both goons with hot cooking fat. All this has taken five seconds maximum. Whistles shriek at the two disturbed goons as the two disturbed goons writhe on the floor in a hideous agony, faces cracked and smoking. Cafeteria workers clear a path as prison guards rush in with billy clubs drawn. As the guards haul him off, Rorschach emits a ferocious hiss. It sounds uncannily like the sizzle of boiling oil on human flesh. Cut two, interior, maximum security wing, night. A prison trustee wheels a cart down a long, empty corridor. Delivering dinner to the prisoners in a solitary confinement, some of the cells are visible through ordinary barred entries. Others are totally sealed off with sliding service trays mounted in solid metal doors. At a cell of the latter kind, the trustee knocks once on the door, then throws back a small panel to reveal the impassive face of Rorschach. Hey, Rorschach, those cats you threw the grease on, they're dying, man. 
Their friends are talking about it. See if those two go under, this whole place blows. Rorschach emits his trademark hiss and turns from the door. The trusty <laughs> chuckles in anticipation. <laughs> I'd hate I'd hate to be you, man. Locked in here with the likes of I'm not locked in here with them. They're locked in here with me. With that, the panel slides suddenly shut in the trustee's face. Cut to Interior, prison interrogation room, day. Long and Rorschach have changed rooms. The new room, two chairs, a square table, is identical to the first, except for the reinforced wire mesh, which spans its width, separating doctor from patient. Through a narrow opening in the wire, Dr. Long slides a card across the table for Rorschach's inspection. It's the same series of ink blots as before, the butterfly leading off. But this time, the subject has decided to cooperate. A whore fucking. Who is she? Do you know her? Too obvious. No response. Long moves on to card number two, the nice flowers. Man's guts falling out of his shirt. <clears throat> Long clears his throat almost imperceptibly and nods. Card number three. Doggy. Big old floppy-eared dog. With his skull split open. And what split the dog's skull open? Why, doctor? I did. He was a bad dog. Rorschach is toying with him now. Dr. Long gets down to brass tacks. Walter. This compulsion of yours, to punish transgressors, in your mind, what gives you the right to judge them? God isn't there to do it. We don't know that. Rorschach eyes him for a moment, then nods sagely. Oh yes, we do. So the rest of the world is wrong and you're right, is that it? No response. You tried to help people once. What turned you around? Why would you want to kill a dog? With Long firmly on the hook, Rorschach settles back to eludicate. Elucidate, Jesus. One night, I opened my eyes, saw the world. Exterior, warehouse district, dusk, flashback. Ruined buildings, broken windows. The streets are silent except for the distant sound of dogs barking. Rorschach's narration continues over scene. 75, kidnap case. A little Franco girl. Weeks dragged by, no word. Thought of a little child, alone, frightened. Decided to intervene. The lone figure of Rorschach emerges from the shadows and turns up his collar. He strides deliberately down the sidewalk past a ramshackle wooden storm fence covered with obscene graffiti. <clears throat> Got a tip. Abandoned dress factory in Brooklyn. He peers through a broken slat in the fence. In a side yard, two huge German shepherds growl playfully, fighting over some unseen object. Interior, dress factory, dusk, flashback. A door swings open and Rorschach enters. He pockets a metal metal file, flicks on a flashlight. Mannequins, decrepit sewing machines, rolls of rotting fabric. The light shines on a small, dank cot in the corner. Rorschach wanders over. He finds opened tins of food, an overturned water glass, and on the floor, a rope. There's a pot-bellied stove nearby. Rorschach crouches beside it, sticks a hand inside, and sifts through the ashes. He pulls out a charred scrap of fabric from a child's pajamas, decorated with balloons and teddy bears. I don't know, they had Yodas on them and shit. (laughs) He stands. In the, opposite direct, in the opposite corner of the room is a big wooden chopping block. Rorschach wanders over and examines the surrounding paraphernalia. A cleaver, a bone saw, an assortment of butcher's knives. He stands there a moment, then moves to a wire mesh window. Dogs wouldn't shut up. That's when I knew, there were, that's when I knew where the little girl had gone. His POV, the yard outside, dusk, flashback. The German shepherds romp in the dying light. We close in on the dogs until we see what it is they're tussling over. A big bloody knob of bone. Decided to wait for the owner. 
Interior, factory, entry, night, flashback. Keys in the lock. A moment later, the door swings wide. A fat man enters and whistles to the dogs. Fred? Barney? Dinner time. Rorschach steps out of the shadows and bashes him over the head. Mm. Interior, interrogation room. Oh, wait. <laughs> better than mine. Better than mine. Interior, interrogation room. Day. Rorschach, master of suspense, decides to take a break in the story. He leans back in his chair. Finally, Dr. Long, dreading his reply, asks, Then what happened? Made a little trip to the butcher store. Locked up tight. Had to break in. Interior, factory, night, flashback. The fat man squirms on the floor, a gag in his mouth. He's handcuffed to an exposed pipe. Rorschach strides into frame with a grocery sack. He kneels beside the fat man and loosens his gag. Then he peels off his gloves and reaches into the sack. What? What are you? Rorschach silences the fat guy by cramming a fistful of raw hamburger into his open mouth. He's got several pounds of the stuff, and he spends the next few seconds smearing it all over the fat man's face, throat, and hands, stuffing the leftovers down his shirt. When he's done, he reaches into the sack for a big plastic bag full of steer blood and empties it over the fat man's head. Frantic scratching from outside, Rorschach strolls over to the door and, as the fat man wriggles in helpless terror, lets the dogs inside. Then he stands back and enjoys the carnage. Interior, interrogation room, day. Dr. Long looks on, goggle-eyed, as Rorschach cheerfully wraps things up. When they had finished eating, picked up a cleaver, split their skulls, died happy, full bellies. See, God didn't kill that little girl, or the man that killed her, or the dogs, or me. If God saw what any of us did, he didn't see in the mind. That man, then, he was the first. The first you saw the world that night. Random, empty, hideous. God didn't make it that way. We did. We make the world in our own image. What else can I illuminate? Long's had enough. He reaches for the concealed buzzer, and the prison guards file in. Rorschach gets up. Before he turns to go, he points a finger at Long's ink blot. No right and wrong, Doc. You said so. Maybe not a dog. Maybe just a man's face. See it now? The guards drag Rorschach out. Dr. Long, still queasy, empties a couple of pills from a bottle and gulps them down dry. After a second, he reaches for his briefcase. As he's gathering his cards, he stops suddenly, his gaze riveted to the random symmetrical pattern on top of the stack. It seems to shift before his eyes. Long blinks, swallows hard. We move in tighter and tighter on the Rorschach blot. Inky blackness filling the screen. Fade out. We don't often get such perfect ending points. No, it's, it's because you carefully planned it out. Completely planned it. I mean, you had a lot of time with quarantine and all. I'm a regular Adrian Veet. <laughs> <laughs> a smokeless Adrian Veet. I love that he did. I love that he mentioned the cigarette instead of the renewable energy source, which is why all the like corporate like companies were like attacking him and shit was because yeah. he gets their shit away for free. But instead, he's like, "What about a cigarette? Yeah, cures cancer. That's my <laughs> greatest accomplishment." <laughs> this is pretty true to the story, right? Like, I'm I'm having a hard time quibbling with it right now. Yeah, it's. Uh, go ahead, sorry. In fact, sorry. they made one um, improvement that the Snyder movie made, and that's actually showing us Rorschach's they're locked in here with me moment. Because in the book, that's just part of the doctor's notes. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I mean, and it, I wish that they would go a little further on the Dr. Long stuff. I loved it in the book, the, the whole, like, turning 
a doctor that's wanting to fix somebody because he thinks it would like help him write a book and shit like that to like actually coming across somebody fucked up and it like ruins his marriage and all kinds of shit in the book yeah like it's it's i mean i, I don't necessarily like the uh the changes they did in the interview i i, I love the uh the line for um men go to prison but monsters get put down uh sure. i missed that part I, I i mean the the part about shoving hamburger and letting the dogs eat them seems like it was just kind of like a a cool torture moment but it's I don't cool think it to, really it's cool to it. show yeah it's cool to show like if they're gonna show that in, in like watching rorschach watch the guy and then like cutting the long like oh fuck this guy's crazy like right and, and i i i think that's just a separate take because the take in the book that i got was that this was his first kill and it was him finally making that that leap because he, he'd only like rough people up and broke legs and shit before he met this guy right and so it's him pacing back and forth not knowing what to do like that that, that was bigger in the book but yeah the, visually the idea of him that's like a game of thrones ramsey moment right they're also right. skipping over the whole thing where the doctor is interested in publishing this as you know a book to further his career which is right it seems far more important to him than actually like helping rorschach or any and of that's, that that's what rorschach notices in the book is like oh i know why you're here so i'm not gonna give you anything and then he's like you know what i'm gonna give you exactly what you hope for and it just fucks that doctor up and then in jeff johns's uh doomsday clock uh there's a new rorschach and it's actually Dr. Long's son. Awesome. Wow. Cool. That's cool. Yeah, it's a real interesting take. Um, oh, maybe I'm, that's cool. <laughs> I'm, only like, I'm only like halfway through Doomsday Clock, um, and I was real, real hesitant about it. Because, I, I mean, how oh. do you pick up Watchmen and run? Um, but Jeff Johns like, is doing a good job. I'm liking it. Is it... Is it better than the HBO show? No, up? nothing is better than the HBO show. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> that's just fire. I love that shit. That's literally the greatest thing that's ever happened to humanity. Whoa! <laughs> better yeah. than Seinfeld? That's high praise. <laughs> hey, look, guys. I have never used hyperbole in the entirety of my life. Never, not <laughs> once. Ever. <laughs> I am the best at not using hyperbole. <laughs> so um i think that our plugs still work yeah josh tell people where they can find you on the internet oh man you can find me at joshwayjbaker.com uh you know with the rona there's not a lot of uh like event videos happening but i've been trying to do i've been uh here in georgia uh you're still allowed to do real estate work so i've been working on real estate video right now and then uh doing some product videos surprisingly so that's a thing for Holla like for like hand sanitizer and face masks yeah hand sanitizer face masks coffins all the most valuable things in our world right now condoms um if you want more table reads, you can go to the link tree that's on the screen if you're watching on YouTube uh, or hit tablereadspodcast.com. I also have a new podcast called Stargirl After Show. It is about the new Stargirl TV series. And um, unlike this show, I'm treating it like a real thing. I've got like interviews with cast members and I do editing and stuff so it doesn't sound terrible. So you guys could, should check that out at stargirlaftershow.com. You can find Jeff on Skype right there. I'm here. That's right it. Here. There he is. You can, you can find me on the last, like, 50 episodes of Table Read. <laughs> it's getting there. I don't think it's quite 50, but it's almost there. In fact, I think, I think this is... No. Our next episode is Josh's 50th episode. Oh. Hey! We're doing it a long time all of a sudden. Happy birthday! Man, I'm, I'm an old man now. Yeah, now suddenly you're going to start finding gray hairs in your beard and being like, what the? How? They're all blonde, but now they're coming out of my ears and nose. <laughs> That'll do it too, yeah. The 50-episode oh. old podcaster. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, how do you think I feel? I'm 120 today. Jesus. Hey. So, uh, that's it for this week. We'll be back next week with some more Corona shut Watchmen, I guess. Yeah. It's nice. not my favorite. Fuck, fuck this Corona shit. You know, I... I set everything up in here, you guys, to have like this awesome three camera setup. I was like, can't wait to have them in there. And then the Aww. country's just like, we're shut down. Yeah. Take you and your three cameras and go eat some bat. <laughs> and with that, we're out. We'll see you next week. And until then, we will miss you. This podcast was created by Sean McBee. For more, visit TableReadsPodcast.com. Cut to black.